Behold how to remaster Rogue Galaxy. In this video, I will go over which version of the game I play, my emulator settings, patches to use, texture pack options, reshade injection, and even CRT shaders. Or, in other words, I'll show you how to give Rogue Galaxy the sauce. Keep in mind, I am not claiming this is the best way to play, but rather how I play. Take it all with a healthy grain of salt. If you want to support the channel, hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Remember to share the good news of the gaming gospel, and ye shall be blessed. I say these things in the name of me and one of the Father, the with the Son, and Carmack, the Holy Ghost. Amen, and enjoy the video. There are four versions of the game you can choose from. The original Japanese version, released December 8th, 2005. The North American version, released January 30th, 2007. The Japan-only Director's Cut, released March 21st, 2007. The European version, released September 7th, 2007. And lastly, the PS4 re-release, which came out December 5th, 2015. I don't see any reason to play the original Japanese version outside of being a collector or a super fan because all of the other versions are widely considered to be better for various reasons. The North American version at release was dubbed, quote, the perfect version by localization producer Now Higo due to a rebalanced difficulty, improved graphics, a new planet, characters, items, missions, more dialogue, and tons of other improvements. All of this was carried over into the Japanese-only director's cut version, which is really the same as the North American version, but with Japanese voiceovers and text. The European version is also the same as the North American and the director's cut versions, with a few small differences in damage calculations, nothing you would notice in your average playthrough. Both the North American and European versions of the game have a 60 FPS hack. The difference being in the PAL versions, both cutscenes and gameplay are unlocked to 60 FPS, while for the NTSC version, only gameplay is unlocked to 60 FPS. Plus, in my testing, I couldn't even get the patch to work for the NTSC version at all. Furthermore, both European and North American versions also have a texture pack option, albeit from different authors. However, the PAL texture pack is almost double the size compared to the NTSC texture pack. I would assume it's because the textures are less compressed and of higher resolution, as it does look superior to me when I compare them side by side. And lastly, the PS4 version does run at 1080p, has trophies, and is really convenient if you just want to play it on a console. Taking all of this into account, I recommend emulating the PAL version with PCSX2 as you get the bigger texture pack, 60 FPS in gameplay and cutscenes. Plus, if you want the Japanese voiceovers but English menus and text, there is an undubbed version of the PAL release by Selveria Team available online and that is what I ended up using. You get all the sauce options plus OG Japanese voices. And without further ado, let's get into emulating on PCSX2. PCSX2. If you have never used PCSX2, check out my basic setup guide linked below to get started. Alrighty then, let's get into my PCSX2 settings. But first, we're gonna change a few things in the actual game. I'm gonna hit triangle, go to system, settings, and I'm going to change my camera rotation up and down and left and right to reversed. What it calls normal is what most people call inverted now. I also like to turn off the mini map and the compass for a cleaner image. The next thing you're gonna notice is the game's native resolution of 512 by 448 by today's standards on a modern 4k monitor is going to look pretty bad so to fix that we're going to go to settings graphics rendering and under internal resolution i check 8x for 5k my monitor is 4k and my gpu can handle it so i super sample up to approximately 5k but if your gpu cannot handle it then pick the interval that matches closest to your monitor's output resolution and that gets the game looking pretty good but you'll notice it's still a little bit blurry that is because a lot of old ps2 games had intentional blur as an anti-aliasing method to fix that go to display and simply check anti-blur and that gets the game looking pretty stacked but we can do more with patches and hacks all 
Alrighty then, we are going to enable three different patches or hacks. To do this, it is in a slightly different spot. You're gonna go to settings, game properties, patches, and enable the widescreen 16 by nine patch, which is already enabled. Remove a black bars. This sort of works. It's supposed to remove the black bars and cutscenes. So far in my testing, it works in some cutscenes and not in others, and 50 slash 60 FPS. Now there's a couple tweaks to this. In order for the widescreen patch to work, once you've enabled all of them, you have to go to settings, graphics, and make sure apply widescreen patches is applied here. Now for the 60 FPS to work under emulation, you have to have your EE cycle rate set to at least 180%. And the last thing you have to do is this will not work if you do not select the right option at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to go to system, reset, choose English, and then right here, I have to choose the 60 hertz NTSC, which is a little bit confusing because we're running the PAL version of the game, but we wanna choose to run it in the NTSC mode. This is the way that we can get 60 FPS in both gameplay and cutscenes. And that's it. Now we're running the game in 4K 60 FPS with some, if not most, of the cutscenes having the black bars removed. And it gets the game looking even more stacked, but we can add some special sauce with texture packs. If you've never swapped textures with PCSX2, there is a great tutorial by Warped Polygon linked in the description below. The short version is download either the Ice Bullet Texture Pack if you are playing the North American slash NTSC version, or the Ivy Rock Pack if you are playing the PAL slash European version. Both are linked in the description below. Place either of the extracted folders named the serial number of the version you are playing. So for North America, it would be SCUS 97490, and for Europe, it would be SCES 54. 552. Place them inside PCSX2's texture folder, which by default is going to be located under Documents PCSX2. Then go to Settings, Graphics, Texture Replacement, and enable Load Textures. Full disclosure, the recommended Ivy Rock pack is currently behind a paywall. Personally, I have bought this pack and all of his texture packs and have no issues paying the community for their work. However, Ivy Rock has been accused of stealing from other texture authors. I don't know if this is true or not. An accusation isn't necessarily a guilty verdict, and I've not seen anyone claim this particular Rogue Galaxy pack contains any stolen work. As such, I thought about uploading this pack and maybe his other packs and providing them for for free, but since I don't know the whole story, I decided not to. I will tell you this, somebody else has already done it. If you really want this or any of his packs for free, you can get them. I'll leave it at that. Comparison-wise, both packs look very similar, particularly when it comes to the characters. The biggest differences you will see are in the environment textures. Depending on the scene, I find myself sometimes leaning towards Ice Bullet's pack and sometimes leaning towards Ivy Rock's pack. However, because Ivy Rock's pack works on the PAL version, which allows 60 FPS in both gameplay and cutscenes, that's what I ended up deciding on. Uh, I've got to fix one thing I forgot to mention. The recommended setting for this game on PCSX2.net for the blending accuracy is four. If you set it to full, you're going to see some weird kind of blooming, and you're also going to see weird lines like you see right here. If you set it to maximum, which is supposed to be the highest quality, it looks even worse. Minimum is the only thing that has no visual glitches. Again, this is only an issue to change if you are using the texture pack. If not, set it to full as recommended. All in all, this gets things looking pretty high grade, but we can do more with reshade. First, to snag Reshade, go to reshade.me, click download the newest version. At the time of recording, it is 6.4.0. Unless you're using a shader toggler, you do not need to get the add-on support version. Once it's downloaded, double-click the EXE. It's going to bring you to this screen. Browse to the application you'd like to install it to. For this video, it's the PCSX2 emulator, which I will install to the PCSX2-QT. Once that's done, I'm going to hit next. On this screen, it will depend on which renderer you use when emulating. I almost always use Vulkan, so I'm going to check Vulkan. But if you're not sure, navigate to your PCSX2, click Settings, Graphics, and under Renderer, it will tell you which one you're using. For most games and most reshade setups, it will not matter. You can use Vulkan, OpenGL, DirectX 12, or DirectX 11. As mentioned, I use Vulkan, so I check Vulkan, then I hit Next. On this screen, it's easier to install all of the effects, so click Uncheck All. 
then check all, which will enable all of the effects, then press next, and you're going to see a screen as it installs. Then when it's installed, just click finish, navigate back to your PCSX2 folder, and you should see a new folder called reshade-shaders. Double click into that, and you'll see two folders, shaders and textures. If you install any other third-party shaders, like take the shaders and place them in the shaders folder, and take the textures and place them in the textures folder. Once you are in your game, to open Reshade, press home, and you can start picking and choosing which plugins to use. All right, let's get into my personal Reshade settings. Hit home to bring up the Reshade menu. Long story short, I tried to inject RTGI lighting, ambient occlusion, but the depth of buffer does not detect properly in this game, which means I ended up doing just a couple things. I use the plugin levels for color correction. This has already been adjusted to what I like. This just crushes the blacks and makes the colors pop a little bit more. I use vignette. I like it. A lot of people don't but I do. And last but not least, I use AMD Fidelity Contrast Adaptive Sharpening or CAS to add just a really subtle amount of sharpening to the image. And I'm really liking the way this looks right now, but we can give it one more drop of extra sauce with CRT filters. Let's get into CRT filters. A reshade, you're going to have a bunch of CRT options. The ones that I personally like is CRT Royale. You see here, that looks pretty good. If you want a dirtier CRT, CRT New Pixie looks super dirty, retro, and old school. And last but not least, I also like CRT Fake Lots. And also, there's way more filters you can add to Reshade, but there's a few that I really like that currently do not work with Reshade, and that is the Retro Crisis CRT Shader Pack. In order to use those, we are going to go to Google and type in Shader Glass. Go to the first link, which is a GitHub link. Come down here and download the newest version of Shader Glass. At the time of recording is 1.14. You're going to double click the EXE and run it. When it pops up, I'm going to go to Shader, choose from library scroll down to retro crisis open that and for me because i'm on a 4k screen and i liked curved warping for my crt shaders i'm going to come into 4k curved the one that i personally like the most is playstation dirty so i'm going to choose that then i'm going to hit Control shift g to make it full screen and overlay it to me this reminds me of a gx tv i had when i was a kid and there we go. That's it. Those are all the tips and tricks I know how to do a DIY remaster for Rogue Galaxy. Take what you like. Disregard what you don't. Remember to share the good news of the gaming gospel and ye shall be blessed. I say these things in the name of Miyamoto the Father, Kojima the Son, and Carmack the Holy Ghost. Amen. And enjoy the comparison shots. Mm -hmm.